At the harbour there is a familiar face. Lancer can be found anywhere but in the afternoon this is where he devotes himself to his hobby. Well, what should I ask him about? Ask for cooperation. One conclusion. To defeat the enemy that is yet to be seen, Lancer's cooperation is essential. It's not because the other servants are unwilling to cooperate. If there is even someone who can defeat her at all. It isn't Saber, and certainly not myself. No, she can fall by none other than the Spearman's hand. Lancer! I call out to him. This too is a new fragment of daily life that I haven't seen until now. I explain the situation to the best of my ability. About the reproducing of the Holy Grail War. About Bazette Fraga McRamets who continues to fight at night. About the fact that she needs to be defeated for everything to be resolved and that, as her former servant, Lancer is the trump card. <coughs> Lancer remains silent. Telling him the truth won't be enough to change his response. Just like before... Before? He'll refuse, saying it has nothing to do with him. So, before that... I toss the earring I found in the mansion over to him. That's not it, you idiot. まだ出会ってなかったんじゃないのか。He couldn't afford to do so in the middle of the Holy Grail War. Damn, I give up. まあ、預かっておくけどよ。いいのか俺に渡しちまって。それが最善だからな。まあ、正直に言えば… There is no point in saying that. Look, the point is... The earring has been returned to its owner. If even a present like this doesn't work, there is not much hope in getting Lancer's help. Just like before, I must think of a way to beat her with me and Saber. Easy. A change of heart? Lancer has agreed to cooperate. いや、助かるけど時間は深夜。レジ前に教会の広場だけど。わかった。待機しておく。ああ、それと条件が一つな。マスター退治は俺がやってやるからお前は手を出すなサイバーも連れてこなくていいあいつの先方は知っているからな一分とかからねえよ。See ya. Lancer goes back to his fishing spot. あ、いや、ちょっと待った。あんだよ。まだなんかあるのかいや、ないけど。いいのか本当に。頼み込んだみでなんだけど。女殺しと主君殺しはしないんだろ。な細かいことを忘れろ。てめえの言葉に縛られてるようじゃ人生楽しめねえぞ。So he says, "Who was the one who stuck by those details until the bitter end?" ランサー、あんた月賞破ったらペナルティを受けるんだろ。大丈夫なのか。二つも破っちまって。that was the end of his myth. Through a conspiracy by Medb, Ku Hullen had his left arm sealed after eating what he knew to be dog meat. With a cynical smirk, Lancer disappears towards the wharf. The twilight of Cullen's hound. As he was surrounded by Queen Medb's forces, the bards sang to him like so. 
give me your spear or I will spread the story of your shame. In that era, the songs of the minstrels were treated as truth, even if they were pure fiction. Cuchulain gave his spears to the minstrels. The spears which had passed into the enemy's hands one by one snatched all that was dear to him. There were three minstrels. The first threatened Cuchulain's honor. The second pressed for the spear by threatening to mock all of Ulster otherwise. And the third. Cuchulain had lost his charioteer and his favorite horse. Still, the third minstrel sang again for the last spear. There are no more spears to give. For the price of my own honor, for the ransom over the honor of all Ulster, I have paid in full. So said Cuchulain, raising his voice. To that, I see, I see, so let me sing to shame your family and all who are dear to you. The minstrel laughed and sang in reply. Hearing this, Cuchulain laughed at the top of his voice. I have no choice then, and tossed the last spear. By the enemy's hand, the spear finally pierced the belly of the hound. I'm not sure why Lance was willing to help, but everything is now fully prepared. Under the dim moonlight, tonight at the church, a conclusion will be reached. Church at night. Finale draws closer. Now that agreement with the spearman has been reached onto the battlefield. Let's go out for a walk. Alone. Church. We finally met on the hill road leading towards the church. Lanza kept his promise. Yo, Nanda, Jikan Yuri Choi Hayai Janika. His jokes might be casual, but his armor isn't. It was half a year ago that I last saw him in full battle array. Ah, that's right. It's already been half a year since the war ended. So, Stopping the ass of yet unseen master's trump card, Fragarach is the key to this battle. Yeah, Fragarach is not a good thing. It's 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 a good thing. So Lanza says. There is no way to defeat Fragrach. That thing is a missile that wrecks to the enemy's trump card and is released when a clash occurs. Thus, to defeat Bazet, one must not use one's own noble phantasm. If you restrain your own trump card, Fragrach's power will be effectively halved. The look in Lancer's eyes tell me that there's no way he would lose with this strategy. Come to think of it, amateur magic and regular ranged attacks like arrows and knife throwing won't even scratch him. His combat skill is also superior to Bazet's. Should he fight consistently, victory should not be a problem. However, Fragarach is undefeatable. Despite this fact, Lanza still rose to the sword's challenge. We climb up the hill towards the makeshift arena. The moonlight is dim and my eyes cloud a little when I look up. The moon is dark tonight, or perhaps the stars are close. In the void of the night, where one can touch the darkness with a stretch of hand, there are two figures awaiting our arrival. No longer knowing how many times this had occurred before, the Lady Magus, followed by the dark shadow, Avenger, fixes her stare onto the enemy as always. As if seeing a ghost, her sight becomes transfixed onto Lancer's figure. Lancer pays no attention to the Magus, with his index finger, he estimates the distance to his foe. 
One, two, three, four. The distance is about ten meters. He steps into a throwing range and points the tip of his spear to the ground. Eoro, Nido, Ansur, Yim. Was that some sort of spell? A square with a rune at each corner appears, but it doesn't feel like magic at work. Not moving a step away from his position, Lancer swings his spear once in the direction of his opponent. Your move. No names are exchanged. The battle's aura speaks for itself. Bazet asks the shadow. あんなサーバントは今まで the shadow cackles. But now, the Lady Magus has lost all her fighting spirit. Gazing at the enemy in front of her, she is about to burst into tears, not even sure why herself. Then Lancer's cold words pierce her heart. Oi, I'm going to kill you now. What? She lifts her fists, as if she is afraid. Her resolve is completely gone. Matte, Matte, Godasai. Matashua. Anata to Tatako Ryu and I. Anata that the Matash to Tatako Ryu. Ardaro. Anta was a high sense only cuts Tamenikta. Sabanto Subete Tausuma de Tatakaiwa or an eye. Anta Waima. Oreto Koroshio Tameniko Boniru. The shadow laughs. A smile that says, that's right. あなたと私はあなたと戦わない。そうだ。あなたと戦わない。あなたと戦わない。だって、だってあなた私のこと知ってる。知らねえよ。a simple sentence. Her knees nearly give out like a puppet with its strings cut. Not the support of strings, but her own will keeps her standing. That is the real reason behind the magic that lands are cast. The Lady Magus resumes her battle pose. The spearman grips the cursed lance tightly with both hands. The air freezes. Lancer's noble phantasm is eagerly waiting for its master's call. And on the other side, ten meters away from him, a lead-colored sphere is floating behind the Lady Magus's figure. This is a mystery of Bazet Fraga McRamets, the sword Fragarach from the Age of Gods. Lancer's well aware of its abilities and had also concluded that its limitless countering power cannot be defeated. Yet, having made that judgment, its grip does not weaken. The spearman's arms ripple with strength. It is not a throw, Lance's own body becomes one with his spear. The sphere starts expanding. That sword of the gods protected by a mysterious force and a certain concept locks onto the spearman's heart. Murai'u 
belief and revelation of the true name all in the same instant. The first to take to the air was the cursed red spear, Gael Bolk. Tadakadach, the sword that alters light, rises to intercept it. The oath of Adgabla leaves no room for hesitation. Both are aiming to destroy the enemy with their greatest strike. The points cross. An attack that means death to both of them. The spearman does not have a shield to deflect the sword and the magus cannot dodge the lance. However, if they are to strike each other simultaneously, the Lady Magus will come out unharmed. Just by a little. Should the Magus sword hit its target just a little sooner, the battle will be decided that very instant. Fragadach, the sword that alters light. What this sword gouges out isn't the enemy's heart. It severs the fate of mutual destruction. It is a cursed sword of certain victory. Because of this, it is impossible for Fedagadach to attack first. The enemy has to use its trump card before that, that is the prerequisite for releasing Fedagadach. The enemy will always move first. Accordingly, even if Fedagadach defeats the enemy in one blow, the Lady Magus will be simultaneously destroyed by the opponent's noble phantasm. What sounds like a certain kill is a mutual attack made with the premise of one's own death. However, Bazet's sword reverses all of that. It is released immediately after the activation of the enemy's noble phantasm, yet no matter how fast the opposing weapon is, it will always reach its target first, taking the enemy's life. A noble phantasm that delivers the final blow in a needle-thin, concentrated blast that alone deserves praise. But its truly dreaded power lies in its special ability. That which comes later cuts first. Like that second name implies, Fragadach warps the idea of cause and effect, rewriting its own attack as the event that occurred first. And the result? No matter how great a noble phantasm may be, the dead cannot use it. The one who is killed first cannot counterattack. Fragadach is a mystic code that exaggerates this fact. It is a conceptual curse that distorts fate. That weapon is a cursed sword of reversal that can nullify any attack. With time as its blade, this trick of the gods has no equal. And therefore, Blanza, who released his spear first, will not be accepted from this curse. The sword of the war god is approaching. Once Fadagadach is let loose, it cannot be stopped. The moment he used Gaelborg against Fragadach, he had already lost. The spearman is well aware of this. To survive an attack made by the sword of the war god, one needs to possess an auto-resurrecting noble phantasm or more than one life. In other words, something that is resurrected after being killed would be Fragadach's natural enemy. Of course, Lancer does not have anything of the sort. The spearman knew the conclusion of the battle he entered before it even started. At that time, for only a split second, he thought he saw the man in front of him waver. He had no way of understanding what it meant. Only. That man's complaint was one he had experienced as well. It's an old story. Perhaps I wanted to be killed by your hands. In a serene voice, as in a prayer, the witch from the realm of shadows smiled. Oddly enough, that's when he received his demonic spear. The witch was no longer human. She had excelled too much as a warrior, been too knowledgeable in sorcery, and slain too many men, gods and spirits. The woman who had been the only teacher that the Hound of Cullen ever looked up to had been saddled with a fate where even her own death was out of her reach. 
The witch's realm will one day be sundered from the mortal world, reduced to a land of the dead. The reward for a human that became too close to godhood was ascension to a plane that is neither of this world nor the next. What a predicament! I suppose I should have died before I became this way. In the gloomy castle's garden, the witch laughed. It was the same hearty laugh that he was so fond of. The beloved disciple, still but a youth, had finally arrived at the castle by the shortest route. Even so. If only you were born a little earlier, young, still so young. The witch chuckled. The beloved disciple accepted it as a mature warrior. He had intended to live fast, but... As a man, he had left the woman he loved until it was too late and regretted it. The war god's sword pierces the spearman's chest. Sharp pain, a feeling he had almost forgotten, briefly fills him with energy. Strength flows into the crumbling fist again. The spear has left behind but one regret. The demonic spear only ever took away the lives of his loved ones. His one and only close friend, his son that grew up in a distant foreign land. But before that, it was meant to kill a single woman. Thinking back, he spent his whole life getting sidetracked. One person is not a substitute for another, but if doing so will save someone, then he might as well accomplish now what he regretted not being able to in his youth. His lips curl into a resolute grin. The spearman grimaces as his heart is torn apart and... Ah. Though late in doing so, he complains about his fate. And so the Lady Magus is confident in her victory. The sword of the war god has hit its target before the enemy's lands. At that moment, the enemy's attack became an impossible event that will disappear back in time. This is the world's fundamental law. The natural result, protected by the absolute order that is time. <laughs> Yet, there is another law for her to learn. A concept may be defeated by another concept. The Spearman is no exception to the curse of time either. Whoa! <gasps> Holy shit! It ruptures. Like a flash of lightning, the sharp tip pierces through her ribcage. The moment it shoots through her heart, the spear becomes a thousand sharp thorns, destroying the female Magus' body from within. Her body breaks open. Pain and surprise force out her sealed memories. Fragarach may be the curse that alters the order of events, but this spear is a weapon that truly reverses the cause and effect itself. The moment its true name is revealed, Gael Bolg has already pierced the enemy's heart. Thus, even though, thus, even going back in time to kill its master is useless. For a spear that already held the piercing of the adversary's heart as the result, even the death of its master will not prevent this duty from being fulfilled. Yeah, that's how it was. Her dying brain cannot recognize the enemy in front of her eyes, yet this was a clash between two opposing rules. This man is the only opponent in this world that would revert it to the natural order. She notices the spearman before her, a little far. Even if she reaches out as far as she can, she would just barely fail to reach him. The spear is pulled out. With a clank, something hard drops to the ground. Unable to keep upright, the Magus' body collapses. She falls over into a pool of her own blood. With her pupils already fading, She finds the earring carved from ore 
rolling on the ground. She remembers it. She remembers it, so she manages to reach out and grasp it tightly. This action uses up half of her remaining life, but the feeling of the stone in her paw makes her happy enough for it to be worth it. Lying on the ground, she tries to reach into her pocket. But her arms can no longer move. She cannot take out the amulet she has stowed away. She doesn't understand what she is trying to say herself. But the fact that she can't show what's inside her pocket fills her with so much sorrow, she becomes that much further away from understanding. The spearman is leaving. Eyes full of sorrow, the magus happily repeats again and again. Ten seconds later, even that has stopped. All told, it took one minute. Lancer's prediction was painfully accurate. Holy uh, shit! What do you want Stepping away from Bazet's corpse, Lancer lets out a heavy sigh. He is using his spear like a walking stick to support his bloodstained body. In any case, the outcome is clear. The only one left is Bazet's servant, Avenger. Without his master, he shouldn't put up too much of a fight. Lancer's body is fading away. The battle between Fragarach and Gaebolg was one of mutual destruction. Each received a blow, so there is no reason why Lancer would be the only survivor. This must be a true man's spirit. Muttering something about losing face, he soon disappears. But what now? Bazet, thought to be the one reproducing the Holy Grail War, is now defeated. There is no dramatic change yet, but we should be freed from the binds of these four days at dawn. The shadow laughs. His master is dead, yet Avenger seems to be unaffected. The moon is dyed black. All of a sudden, those beasts have gathered around the church. <laughs> the beasts aren't moving an inch. Their glittering eyes are transfixed not on me, but on the servant. Delighted by the failure of another, distorted by the perverted glee. Spoken like a condemned criminal, terrified of the ultimate punishment. Ah, uh, I don't want this, he says. The servant generally begs me to help, then... With a tearing sound, he transforms into a hideous monster. He's the same. 
The Servant Avenger's entire body is melting, morphing into the shape of one of those beasts. こうして俺は失敗する。よく見ておけ、エミヤシロ。これが正体だ。俺は無限に失敗する。俺は無限に死に続ける。この俺がいる限り、聖杯戦争が終わることはない。His body is shivering. The thing that used to be Avenger, despite being terrified by the surrounding beasts and bleeding profusely all over its body, holds onto its sanity and continues to cry out. やめろ。やめろ。可能性を見殺しにしろ。やめろ、やめろ。やめろ。見えない。見えない。もう何も見えない。そうだ。本物の俺を殺しに来。やめ。やめて。殺しに来たら。殺してやる。the black shadow is being devoured by the beasts. The ceremony did not take much time. The beasts are disappearing one by one and then finally, in its place. Lacking all signs of intelligence, a new hideous creature is crouching in front of me. Our eyes meet. The creature tilts its head curiously and then hops into the bushes like a frog. I'm the only one left in the square. Bazette's body has disappeared without a trace as well. Returned to the first day, probably. Tenno Sakasuki. The words are familiar. Heaven's Cup. In the Holy Grail War six months ago, there was a little girl that went by that name. That should be the last piece of this puzzle. On that day, awaiting its end with the break of dawn. In the winter castle, where the little girl awaits, the last path will be revealed. Learned the truth behind the ruins. At the winter castle, the Holy Grail awaits. Learn the truth.